Hello, Internet. Ben here with another mysterious space development thingamathing. I don't know what to call these. Um, so, in the last couple of videos, we've been setting up this crazy ball boss eye. No, just ball boss. Um, and I've had some thoughts about it. I think that I do want the eyes to be kind of a bigger deal about the boss, that hitting them really should be more of like a explicit choice, like it's something you, you specifically aim for. And I think in order to accomplish that, so you know how we've got like these these little, I mean, I've been calling them caltrops, I don't know why. I guess because they're pointy and, I don't know, they're dangerous to attack or to hit, I don't know. But anyway, they, they kind of, you have this cloud of them around the boss along with the eye. And right now the eyes and the caltrops kind of occupy precisely the same space in precisely the same way, right? They kind of move around and orbit in different directions and the distance kind of varies. But I think if we want to make the eyes stand out a little more, then they should specifically weave in and out of that cloud um, at, at a slower period. So like when they come out, it's a, it's a deal and you can go for them if you want. And when they're in, then whatever. And I think the thing might be that you can't hurt the center until you kill the eyes, right? Do a thing like that. So that will that will make it more of a of a thing. And the caltrops, I almost wonder then, like should they be invulnerable, um, and maybe not be throwing so many bullets at you? I would still like that. Like you hitting them is a mistake on your part. You know, you're not supposed to be hitting them. You're supposed to be hitting the eyes, something like that. So um, we'll have to think about it. But and then have the lightning attack be kind of the main thing of the, of the boss, right? So this is definitely making it a little more of a puzzle. Um, and you know, the first time you fight it, uh, but it also gives you an opportunity to really learn about that boss, because you won't be able to defeat him until, you know, he's like, oh, the eyes are taking damage, the other parts aren't, or something. Or, or maybe the other parts just take so much longer to kill, or something. So anyway, so let's let's start working on that. So I think the first thing to do is we have this cloud of caltrops. I think I want to make the cloud of them a little bigger, have them cover a larger distance um, from the ball, and then again have the eyes come in and out of, of that cloud, um, so that there are definite moments uh, or they are exposed, and then and then you can shoot them down. So, and again, I've really just been trying to think like, how do I make this more interesting? You know. So anyway, let's. Uh, I'm surprised. Where? How does it position these guys? Oh right, I'm a, I'm a silly person. The orbital class has most of the logic. So, we want something like distance plus six times. Nine. Okay, so this is what right. So they have a distance, a set distance. Okay, and then, then they kind of wobble around. That's fine. I think I want to do this a little differently, though. I think I always want them to be centered on the same distance and then have them moving different points of, of a sine wave, you know, weaving around in and out in different directions. So the distance is something that we could set... Um, Per class, right? Because this is the thing, right? We want the we want them to be uh, different distances. The whole point. So, for the caltrop, we'll make it the average of these two. So I'll just do what was it, 36 plus 52 divided by two. Did I do this properly? No, I seem to have typed something crazy. 36 plus 52 equals divided by two equals. There you go. So we'll have them set 44 out, and we could we could wiggle it a little bit. We might as well. So let's go like 42 to 46. Um, not explaining that again. Random numbers. Um, so that's the distance that they'll be going at, and then the eyes should be going at a further out distance. We'll put them a good 10 pixels further, I think. Um, you know, we'll probably have to play with it and see how that how that feels and looks and everything else. So these guys, and then this is the part that we want more swingy and probably to go at different speeds. Um, again, the the eyes should go slower so that they they peek out for longer periods of time, or maybe it'll be good at default. Um, so let's just try it out. So, uh, gosh, what was the old range? I don't remember. 36 to 52. What's what's the range of that? 52 minus 36. Now we're going the other way. This range is 16, which means we want to go 8. So a sine wave, when you do a sine of an angle, you, you dip down to negative 1 and you peak at 1. So if we want a range of 16, then that's going to be positive 8 to negative 8, right? That's why I divide by 2. Why I didn't divide 16 by 2 in my head? I could not tell you. Um, so that's actually not a whole lot more than we've got here, which makes me wonder if it's enough. But let's just, I don't know, let's let's trust in our idea, our theory here. And, you know, when we test it and it's wrong, then we'll revise our theory. It's science. 
That's, I guess, why you get the science in computer science. I don't know. It's probably simplifying things. I really, mm, never mind. The math part of uh, computer science was always like, like the algorithms and stuff, that was always less interesting to me. I always just wanted to make cool things. And like absolutely knowing how to do the algorithms helps you make those cool things. But I always really thought of it more as, I don't know, it feels more like art than, than science to me, which, but again, those things aren't mutually exclusive. So um, anyway, a little bit of rambling. So here's our little caltrops. Fantastic. Here's our eyes. Let's do something. If I should take damage. Let's try a few things. We just want to look at them. Let's not, which is funny because they're eyes, let's not have them shoot their weapons right now. Um, let's not have the caltrops do a big thing. Maybe we should, uh, what is this? It, it returns an int. Return zero. Let's 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 have that. They don't receive damage. Let's see what happens. Um, let's just see what happens. Let's see what this looks like. Um, oh gosh, I hope it's not full screen. Oh thank goodness. I was playing last night with uh, my friend Sandy, and I was very concerned. All right, it does not contain real fruit. This is accurate. Um, we want uh, debugging mode so I can spawn him when I need to, and let's check it out. Spawn I boss. There he is. A I boss has been spawned. So there it is. He's gonna shoot some lightning. We don't want to get too close. The eyes. I think we need. So if we're not gonna have the. That's really funny that he kills his friends. If we're not gonna have the balls. So let's see. Yeah, they can't take any damage. Um. And if they're not going to take any damage, so previously we had kind of been like changing the number of the, um, yeah, I killed them, and then in theory I was able to kill the middle. We haven't hooked up that logic, so I totally can anyway. Um, that's funny, right? So these will never die. And if they're never going to die, then probably what we need to do is um, um, have, have a constant number. I want the swarm to be large enough that it's always blocking your bullets. And then it occurs to me, how will you ever hit the guy in the middle? Probably when you kill the eyes, then several of the cow traps should explode. Um, so let's let's uh, get out of here. Um, and also, I forgot, let's put debugging mode back on, because I've already enabled debugging mode to, um, or set up debugging mode to include free travel, so we don't have to collect fuel, we can just leave and look around. Um, but so let's do some things. So when we spawn these cow traps, we had like, we went through all this crazy trouble, if you remember about like, oh, how many are they gonna be? You know, how healthy will they be? All this kind of stuff, how, how much, you know, damage, blah, 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 blah. We don't need any of that anymore. Um, right, their strength is passed down here. Collision damage imparted. So now I'm kind of thinking that these eyes and these um, caltrops are getting distinct enough that I might actually not have them inherit from <laughs> the same class after all. Because things like the angle delta, we're going to want to control that. That's going to want to be different, you know? I mean, this movement that the... Um, that the orbitals do is kind of the same, right? Doing this stuff and this stuff is the same, but everything else is going to be very different now. Um, I mean, maybe the collision damage imparted base health, maybe not, maybe not. Well, let's just keep going. So what's the next thing we want to do? We always want to have more of the caltrops, so let's do that, uh, which is set up in the ball boss. So, right, we had all like all this crazy strength. What's the total strength going to be? What's all these things? We don't, we don't need any of this anymore. We just want to always put I don't know, we're just going to have to try some numbers. Let's see what it looks like when we have 40. I think we were thinking 50 was going to be the maximum. Um, and then we will do the same thing here. We'll have the effective depth divided by 3, and that will control their collision damage. So if you run into them, that's that's what you're looking at taking, right? Um, the eyes didn't seem to be weaving enough in and out, I feel. I would really like that to be a, a, a stronger swing. I think that means... Right, it's complaining because these aren't used because I commented it out. I think that means that the distance I actually want to to be the same, but I want the variance in their distance to be greater, so they go closer to the to the ball in the middle and then further out, um, if that makes sense. So let's let's go back to the base and let's see where that is. That is uh, here, so we'll call it um, distance, I guess variance, I don't know if that's the right word. I don't know if that is the right word, but I can't think of a better word, so that's what we'll call it. Um, protected 
I think that was something I fixed off camera once. These were all private, and so the child classes couldn't access them, so they need to be protected. I keep learning that private is much less useful than protected. Like, it's almost always better to just start with protected. Like, that's fine. Unless you really know, it's like, no. Like, the things like step. Nothing else should be messing with that, so you could argue that it should be private, but like, I'm the only one messing with this code, so having like that much strictness isn't, it holds me back more than it makes things uh, easier. Um, but anyway, I mean, we can do it. Here, since I said it, fine. Damn. It can be private. And see, that's that's foolish, though, because we might want... Nah, it'll be fine. In this case, it'll be fine. But see, this is the thing I'm talking about, where it's like, oh, you set up private... You're like, yeah, no one else will need to use a step. That's just used for, like, you know, calculating where they are in this whole... Um, uh, whatever. Where, where is this used? For, for the distance thing, right? Yeah, for this distance variance. But you're like, well, maybe what I want, then, is that the creature to say only when I'm far enough out from the center, then I want to do something, and that would be based on step or something. You know, it's like maybe then they'll start acting differently based on their step, and so you need access to step. But let's put it private and see how it works out, and then if it turns out I need it, then I can say, aha, see? <laughs> so, oh, I should be watching the time. Okay. Because uh, I, I keep aiming for 20 minutes, and then it keeps being 30 anyway, but at least I'm being consistent about the 30, so we'll just keep saying I'm going to aim for 20 and then let it be 30. Um, I don't know why I'm looking at these. These aren't what I want. So, okay. We want more variance on the thing. So on the caltrops, the variance will stick with the 8, which makes for a total of 16. And then for the i, we're going to have a larger variance. We'll try going as far as 12. And I think I want then the caltrops to be a little further. Wait, so because we put them further out, yeah. If anything, no, that's fine. I'm going to say, if anything, maybe they should be further in. But this will be fine. So let's, um, I mean, sure, we can continue the game, whatever. Yeah, I was able to leave because now I have enabled the, the thing. All right. I think this might be an eye boss because he seems to be coming right at me. Oh, but look, what? They're not, like, wiggling around that distance at all. Or if they are, it's only very slight. Um,. So let's let's see. That's that's incorrect. Um, <laughs> what happened here? Distance variance twelve. Distance variance eight. And then down here. Distance variance times a step. Uh, was that not enough? I think it's possible that the step needs to be initialized to a random thing. That would help. Because what might be happening is that they're all swinging in the same way, you know? So it's just hard to tell. So let's set step equals the game RNG next the game FPS, right? Because I can see below it goes up to, right, we're keeping with an FPS, so, which is going to be 60. So over a period of a second, they should finish a whole, a whole cycle of the, of the sine wave. Um, let's see. That's the create. Oh no, I didn't put debugging mode back on. I'm just be sure. <laughs> All right, what are you? Not what I want. Uh, I don't feel like fighting him because they're both gonna be like up and around, you know. Okay. Uh, spawn eye boss. I keep doing give because you can like give weapons and stuff. Uh, not here though. Like on the sector map, you can give yourself, and then that's so used to the commands. I'm used to you know typing into testing. So. Okay, that's that's a little more cloudy, a little more wobbly. Um, the eyes kind of having the same problem. Get out of here. And yeah, these guys shoot back. But uh, so again, we have that problem. We're never going to be able to shoot inside. Oh, oh, don't don't shoot me. Um, God, I wish the text wasn't there. But yeah, so I think eight just isn't enough of a swing for them. I think it needs to be more. I think they need to be maybe a little closer and a little more swing. Mmm, I won't just be able to continue because. Um, the uh, the delta here, the distance variance. I almost feel like this is the wrong way to implement this as a variable. Really, this is a constant, and it depends on. I mean, here, this is what we should be doing. We should be saying virtual, um, virtual protected distance variance, right? Um, virtual means that. And, um, I don't know. Again, I'm just explaining things in case people don't super know programming. Although, if you don't know programming, then my explanation of virtual is probably not going to make much sense. But you know how we've got like this is kind of the base class from which all the others inherit. 
why is it saying this? But your mark is abstract. Now it's saying crazy things, and I don't believe it. Hold on. Must declare a body because not mark abstract. Oh, abs I'm sorry. You were correct. The virtual is something different but similar. So this is a class from the, that you know we, we inherit from. So Caltrop says, I'm going to inherit all of the things that Bob Boss Orbital defines. And Bob Boss I says, I'm also going to inherit all the things that Bob Boss Orbital defines because that includes like this motion. Um, sorry, this is the wrong thing. You know, this this whole thing about motion and, and positioning yourself and all that kind of thing. Um, what you can also do when you when you set up a class is and say, okay, also I'm requiring that all of my children define this method, a distance variance. Like that's required, right? Whereas setting, like just making this private variable distance variance and having that chill out over here, there's nothing that requires the children to actually define the value. So if, if you inherited the class, you might not. Um, and again, this is more important for libraries, but I'm using it anyway. So anyway, so now since you now why it says, whoa, you can't you can't compile this program. You haven't this this child hasn't properly defined all the things you want. It needs a distance variance. You haven't done it. So that's what we would do. So override the distance variance and then we can return our variable. So let's make it let's make it twelve instead. Um, and I think that and, and we should be doing the same thing with distance probably. Let's just do it like this for now. Uh, we'll mess with distance later. Uh, so for i and 12 probably isn't going to be the case. Um, distance variance return. It's going to want to be more. I think I think we, I do want to do what I was saying, where they should peek out. So they kind of spend their time in the midst of the cloud and peek out, which means we do want them maybe like plus six, right, to be halfway or something. Let's try that. So. Eight and then what is that like 52 and their step right step is controlled by the parent blah 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 these things aren't going to have weapons I don't think anymore um, and another thing we're going to want to do is have the caltrops blow up when an eye is destroyed but we'll work on that um, there are errors would you like to continue no what are my errors did I not define something Right, doesn't exist. Right, so now we make that call to function, not knowing what it will return, not caring, whatever the child class has to, has defined. All right, and that gives you a little more control because then you can imagine having the like eyes go into different modes and saying, well, now I'm going to chill out closer to the center, so my distance variance is reduced because now it's a function, right? So it's, it's easy to do stuff like that. So anyway, uh, we shouldn't continue the game. We should start a new one. Also, I have made a terrible mistake again. Debugging mode. Is this an eye? I don't think it is. You know, gotta find the eyes. Ooh, it crashed. That's a good sign too. Oh no, is it popping up the crash reporter? No, it shouldn't. It was in debug mode. It's just thinking real hard. What are you thinking about? Add fire stick. Uh, five. Seven. Is it having trouble finding a place to put a fire stick? This was a problem that I feared might exist. It's trying to find terrain to place a fire stick in. But it should, um... I mean, it's supposed to just give up. We're still looking at fire stick number five. It's getting terrain. Is negative. Oh gosh, it went to a negative value. It's counting. Oh, it's negative one. Oh, funny. That's a problem. Okay, so we've discovered a new bug. So here's how it adds fire sticks. This was previous video that I did. They were they were super long. Each one was an hour and a half, and in two of them, um, fire sticks were created. So what happens here? I'll, I'll explain because I'm not expecting many people to watch such crazy long videos. When it adds a fire, so I'm glad I discovered this bug before I released. So this episode is about to take a little unexpected turn. So when the game tries to add a fire stick, it finds a random point of terrain. That's what this part's doing. And then it says, okay, I'm going to move either to the left or the right from that, right? Um, if we've picked a zero, then we're going to go left. Also going to go, and again, one less, right? This is giving you a zero or one because computers and numbers and how they like them. Um, so here's the problem. We said we're going to count 
until, so this is right, you start at zero, keep counting as long as, you know, your zero right now is less than the width of the level, and then add the offset delta, which in theory would have just been one. So we go from zero, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's say the width of the level is ten. Ten is no longer less than the width. Okay, we're done. The problem is here is that sometimes it can be negative one, and so then it just wraps around negatively. So we need to do something else. We need to say, um, this is what we need to do. So we need to have an int x offset. And we need to have an x offset delta. Now this isn't what we need. Let me think about this. This is weird because it can go in either direction. What we need is to say plus plus. And then what we would use as the x offset. We'll call it x index instead. We're going to rename this. I'll show I'll I'll talk about this why. Okay. And then int x offset equals x index times x offset delta. All right. This way, we always count from 0 to the width, going one at a time, right? But the value we actually use, which is the x offset, which we know the rest of this loop uses, and I didn't want to go look through it and change a bunch of variable names, which is why I renamed the loop here. It's like, OK, but the offset you're going to use is however you've counted times the offset delta. So if we want, if we had changed this to like 2 or 3 or something, it would still count up the whole width of the level, but then we would be moving in steps of three because that's what we said here. And, this, and that's important because, again, we want to move in, in increments of, in this case, negative one, but we, we always want to count kind of, you know, we want to count up the right number of tries. It's trying to, it's trying to go across the whole width of the level from a random point. That's the start x. From, from a random point to wrap around the whole level, again, because we have that weird level wrapping thing, right? Um, and we don't all want all the fire sticks to start looking for a suitable place using the same coordinate, like always starting at zero, because then they'll all kind of be centered around that point, and you'll be like, why are all the fire sticks in one place? Which, I don't know, that could be interesting. Maybe that's a thing you would want, but I wanted to evenly distribute the fire sticks throughout the level. Um, so it picks a random point, and then it kind of moves and wraps around the whole level here, and that's what this is really doing. Then we're saying, okay, what's the actual x value we're thinking about? It's whatever that start x was, that random starting point, plus the uh, x offset, um, and then because I knew the x offset could become negative, and so the whole thing would be negative, I add back in width so that when I take the modulus of width, we end up okay. Something else I could have done here is it doesn't look like I actually use the x offset anywhere else, so maybe this is a better way to do it. Whoops. Let's um, change this back, back to x offset. We should, maybe we should do x offset plus x offset delta here, right? So this is really how much we're moving by, and then again, let's add in the width for the modulus. Start x. This also works. It's less variables. Does it doesn't make it less readable, arguable? Let's I don't know. Let's uh let's try it out. So wow, I'm surprised that, that did not come up until now. Like that should have been coming up all the time. Let's continue the same game. Because now it shouldn't crash. And it's got the same random seed, right? Alright, so that guy's going in the wrong direction. Let's spawn a I boss. See what it looks like. Okay, so that's a better cloud. I think it could still be more cloud-like. Um, ow, don't you make lightning? And the eyes are kind of weaving in and out. Not really as I'd like. It really needs to be a thicker cloud of um and they really need to weave yeah, everything just needs to be more. I, apparently the values I'm thinking are just not enough. Um and maybe we should pop this up, you know, maybe we should do like what we were doing before. I don't need that screenshot anymore. Well, we're kind of trying to mock up a scene here, right? So you're chilling out here. Let's find the, um, whoops, sorry, that's going to be hard for you guys to see. Um, let's find, um, oh, I think that was it. Yeah, the orbital. Yeah, I think that's what I called this guy because that was the only one at the time. Oh, gosh, I keep pressing all the buttons. All right. So, right, these guys are going to be, like, out and about, and we'd kind of like them to cover, you know, maybe an area like that, basically. In either in either side. Um, so what's the distance between these two things? That's again what I'm I'm curious about. So what do we got? It's got a line of I'm not going to try and position this. So believe me that it's 30 33, which let's say 32. Um, so if we want a 32 a variance 32, then that means 16 is actually because again sine wave goes from negative one to positive one. So negative 16 to positive 16. That's your difference of it's actually going to be 33 because you've got to count zero as well. Um, but let's go to here then. Distance variance. 
to all to find these things. Oh, here we go. So, if it was 32, yeah, then we want 16. Only four more. Is that really going to do it? We'll see. And then the eyes. We want the more swingy. Or, again, just pushed out further. Yeah, let's push them out a little further. Let's go another six. So, that would be... 8 and then 54. Okay. And, um. Oh, no. Why do I keep forgetting? I need to, like. Um. Okay. Spawn. I, I need to have something that just makes it always be on or something. But anyway. So here they are. Okay, that's a, that's a healthy cloud. And the eyes definitely are moving. Uh, kind of in and out. I think, I think it would be better if they more distinctly, like it wasn't just that they were in the cloud, they really were like all the way toward the center. I think that would make it more obvious what was going on. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, and here's the other good thing about a function, because it's not stored in a variable that's serialized or not, it's just a function in the code. When we load up the game, the new values will take effect immediately, so we can do that. So let's put this back, um, what was it before? I'll just undo. Okay, and then let's try doing like 24 to, to really just push them out and, and see what happens. And if that's too much, we can scale it back. Um, but I, I want something like ballpark, so. They seem to be bouncing a lot. Does it seem to you that rather than doing a whole sine wave, they're actually kind of only bouncing half the sine wave? Like, look at the eyes. It seems like, it does seem like they're bouncing along the surface. I think we haven't been covering the whole sine wave. That's probably why everything looks... We keep going like, that's not enough. That's not enough cloud. I think they're not doing the whole sine wave. So where is the thing that does that? That's on the base class. Pi divided by 180. Okay. Pi divided by frames per second. That's exactly right. So, as I mentioned, right, 2 pi makes a full circle. And FPS, 60, makes the whole cycle that we do, right? We're doing up to 60. So yeah, we haven't been covering the whole circle at all. Great. <laughs> all right. And I think if this is good, then we're going to call this the video. So whoa, okay, that's way more cloud-like. Okay, right? So the eyes need to move slower, right? They're like way too bouncy. I really want it to be like definite periods if they're out there. Um, the little caltrops are pretty good, and really even having them... Ooh, even having them touch the thing might be okay, right? Having them touch like that, I think that I think I'm okay with that. Um, and then yeah, trying to touch like trying to hit the eyes shouldn't be such a guess. It should be like no, he's like they're absolutely ow, they you know now they're absolutely peeking out. So go and try and hit them and oh, but now they dip back in. You have to you have to wait a while, right? So let's see if we can do that. That speed is controlled by this bit here. So if we want that different then that's not going to be in the inherited class, right? This is where it's really increasingly looking like these don't actually need to inherit from the same class. There's enough difference. So let's refactor that in the next video. Um, I kind of feel like I didn't accomplish a whole lot, which makes me a little sad, but whatever. We figured out some good things. We figured out a couple bugs, right? The fire stick bug, okay. That was real good to figure out. That wasn't what I set out to do, but that's okay. Um, that's how programming goes. Um, and then we also found this bug, which was important and has solved a lot of problems, um, and kind of have some new thoughts about how the Bosch should work. So that's good, too. So things were accomplished. It's just different sorts of things, I guess. Um, so thank you for watching. I will uh, be recording another one of these videos pretty immediately. I need to think about what kind of schedule I want to release these on. Like, should I be doing a bunch of advance and releasing them one at a time? But then I feel like when the version of Mysterious Space comes out, like the videos might be way behind what's actually going on, you know, I don't know. So I'll think about that more. You don't have to worry about that. Although if you've got opinions, feel free to share them. Um, but anyway, thank you again for watching, and uh, I hope to uh, I hope you will watch the next videos as well. Goodbye.